Hey guys, in this video, we'll see how to deserialize the JSON response body into a Java class representation. In order to convert the JSON structure into a class representation, we first have to create a class that has all the nodes present in that JSON structure. So in the API in the test, we get the structured JSON data for member entity, which has got these three attributes, ID, name, and gender. In part eight of this video series, we have already created this member class inside models package. This class has got representation for all these three nodes present in the response JSON structure. So you see ID, then you see name and you also see gender. Now, please also note that not always a request is a success. For example, in the same endpoint, if I look out for a member which does not exist, okay, I hit enter. What do I see? The status is 404 not found. And the response body is also different, okay? Which means that I have to create a separate response body or a model class to map with this particular response, okay? And now in here, what do you see? There is just one attribute or one node message which is of type string, okay? So guys, let's create a class member not found inside the models package. And since we have got only one field of type string, so let's create that. So we say private string and msg remember the name and type should match okay now in this series we have added google json library already for the purpose of so we have to do three things now okay so number one is we have to create the non-argument constructor then comes the getters and setters so we have to create the getters and setters so i do a right click and i say generate getters and setters for this field Okay, finally, let's create the two string method. Why? Because we are going to load the response into this model class and then we'll just simply print it to the console. Okay, so let us create that. So again, right click source and generate the two string method. Let's select this message field. All right, so we are good to go now. Okay, now in this video, we'll do uh, the following. Number one, we'll load a single member success response into the member class we load a list of member success response into a list of type members. And then finally, we are going to load a single member failure response into the member not found failure class. All right. So let me first also show you the endpoint in Postman, which will simply return us all the members currently available in the database. With the help of this, okay, you can see all the members. All right. Great. So you see in here, this is a list but in here this is an object okay then i have created a test case file deserialize simple json response now in this particular test class whatever code that you are seeing if you have been following my series from beginning you already know this much okay but i'll quickly walk you through so we are just setting up our request all right and we are saying that the basic authentication is this uh, the response type we are setting to json and then we are providing the path parameter remember we have to uh, first load the single member response okay and then we are saying when we make the get request you know store that response in this reference okay now we have the response so from response we have to fetch the response body for that you have this method get body okay now on this get body, you have this method as, okay. Now in here, you could provide the class. You could also provide the type reference object mappers basically comes into picture when you work with Jackson, we are working with Google JSON. So we are fine. Okay. So which means that I have to say as, and then in here, I have to say member dot class. That's it. And this is going to return me as you could see the member object. Okay. So I'm simply going to cut this and use it in here all right like so so this thing will load the data into this member class and once that is done all we have to do is just use the two string method to print it to the console okay so let me save everything and execute it so i hope we'll be able to see the deserialized response and there you go so this is the record all right, so let's move on to the next one. I'm going to set it to false and the next one to true. Now in this, we are going to make use of type ref. Okay, type ref is used to specify generic type information when deserializing a response. Okay, so we get our response and then on response, we have the get body method and on get body, this time we are going to make use of this type reference. Okay, 
so we are going to say new type reference okay and let's bring that in okay and we are going to provide the generic type which is going to be member all right like so and i'm just going to pull everything in here all right so we are good let's save it and execute it all right so now you could see we are still able to get the response okay so these are the two ways we can use to decentralize our json response now guys in the next one we are going to get the list of members okay so again we are getting the response and guys then we have to load that into the array of members okay and simply using this advanced for loop we are printing all the members onto the console so we say dot again as okay and it's very simple so you say member array dot class that's it okay save it change it to true and execute it that's how you're going to retrieve the list of members okay let me set it to false and let us also look at the type reference way so in here again we are loading the response from the response body into the list of members again by using we now say new type ref okay so we get this and then guys in the generic property all you have to mention is first you say it's going to be a list of type member okay so pretty much it let me bring everything in one line save it change this to true and execute it all right there you go so we get the list of members let me change it to false and the last one is pretty simple basically now instead of that member class you know we're going to provide an id uh, which does not exist and then we get that uh, response in this particular format okay with message that this particular id does not exist so guys it's very simple so you say response.getbody as you provide the name of the class and that's it right okay so you see message member with id does not exist so guys this is how you're going to decentralize a simple json response okay so guys before i conclude this video i would like to discuss a couple of more things so i said this is a simple response okay so i open postman and this is a simple response and a list of members i'm also calling this as a simple response because we do not have the nested objects or nested array objects in this right so in this api under test i have created a complex response as well okay so for that we have to say get a single author okay you click on this and now what do you see this is an object which is fine and this object has got the books array and this books array has got these nested objects okay so how do we decentralize such kind of response that is something that we are going to see in the next video another thing is so this far whenever we have created uh, these pojo classes or members right we have written a lot of boilerplate code what do i mean by that so we have created this no argument constructor argument constructor getters and setters and two string method okay so in the next video we are going to see one very interesting library with the help of which you can get rid of all this boilerplate code okay so i hope you like this thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video